Anyone that knows me knows how much I love living in Hiyuma. It is a privilege to live in such a beautiful nature and I feel really grateful to be able to call this place my home. But if there is one thing I don't like about Thailand, it is the warm, snowless winters. Surrounding sea keeps the temperatures up at winter and any snow that we get melts really fast. For a person who really loves cold, snowy arctic winters, it is quite uninspiring and depressing to see the muddy snowless ground and above zero temperatures in the middle of the winter. I try to keep up my spirit by taking long walks on the beach with Jack and going to the pine forest where everything doesn't seem so grey. Beginning of this year I went on a long trip behind the Arctic Circle in Finland and the contrast I saw when returning back to the snowless Hiuma was quite shocking. I felt no inspiration at all to take any photos or videos and I spent weeks indoors just editing my old material. The whole time I felt a constant desire to leave the island as I really wanted the winter to feel like a real winter. In the middle of February I got an idea to go and explore the mainland of Estonia in hopes to find some inspiration and some more snowy scenery to capture. Especially in southern Estonia where the temperatures are always lower than in the rest of the Estonia. So I packed my car, took my beloved dog and bought a one-way ticket to mainland with no clear plan where exactly I will go. The ferry ride only takes 1 hour and 15 minutes and I was ready to start my adventure. My first stop was to fly my drone over the ruins of Unguru Castle. It is located only 5 minutes from the harbour and I always drive past it on my way to Tallinn. I have always wanted to fly a drone over it, but I have never had the time for it. Unger Steinberg started to build the castle to the woman he fell in love with, but before the castle was finished, the woman died and the castle was never fully finished. The castle got damaged in the Second World War and was dismantled even further during the Soviet era. My next destination was the Blue Springs of Sinialika, natural springs that were sacred to old Estonians. I had seen beautiful photos of this place, but never actually visited them myself. Unfortunately, it started to snow right before I got there, and the springs were not visible that day as the surface of the water was covered in snow. I did some location scouting to get to know the area and continued my trips further south. Before driving to the southern Estonia, I wanted to visit some bogs in the Rapla County. I decided to visit Mukribog as I had never been there and heard there is a good viewing tower that I can walk up. The day I went to Mukri was as grey as ever, but at least there was plenty of snow on the ground and I felt I was back in winter. The landscape was beautiful, but the cloudy sky didn't promise any good light, so I used the opportunity to take out my drone and get to know it better. It cannot fly in minus degrees and had been sitting on shelf for months. I finally had a chance to take it out again and see what it is capable of. I had a lot of fun flying it over the bog and learning to control it better. But looking back at the footage I can tell I expected too much out of it and risked crashing it way too many times. I played around with the automatic tracking mode and definitely overestimated its capabilities. Luckily there was no one else in the bog and all there was to lose was the drone itself. I learned that its obstacle avoidance system cannot detect small branches and managed to crash it for the first time. Luckily the drone was fine. I also used the day to work on my dog photography skills and used Jack as my model for running. Jack was really enthusiastic about it, but after a few hundred photos he got bored and decided to take a nap instead. We headed up to the tower for the sunset and to my big surprise, Jack decided to come up as well. He was fighting with his fear of heights, but his curious mind won and up he went. The view from the top was nice and we managed to capture the only 5 minutes of the day when the sun came out behind the cloud before setting for the day.
The next day I drove to Lo Salopog, but realized the road there is not clear from snow and I had to take a long walk over. At least I got what I came for, lots of snow. It was 24th of February, which is Estonian Independence Day. That day we will remember for a long time as we heard the devastating news from Ukraine. I was in total shock of the Russian brutality and wanted to walk in nature to process what is happening. The whole time in the bog my thoughts were with Ukraine and I just couldn't focus on work. I played with Jack a bit and flew the drone over a huge bog lake, but the weather and the war had done their part and I couldn't focus on my work. My next destination was a beautiful city of Tartu. There was an anti-war protest taking place there and I joined it with other Estonians to show our support to Ukraine. Having been born in Soviet Union, Russian crimes are no strangers to us and we felt like this is not just an attack on Ukraine, but the whole democratic Europe. It was a sobering fact that about 1000 kilometers from us, innocent people are dying through the brutality of the Butler's army. In Tartu I met with some of the most important people in my life went ice skating with them in the city center and tried to enjoy the day as much as it was possible. There is an Elisfera animal park not too far from Tartu, where orphaned and injured animals are taken care of. I knew that a lynx lives there and I was hoping to go and photograph it. I always have mixed feelings about zoos as I don't think animals are meant to live in cages. But if it was their only way to survive, perhaps it is not as bad as just letting them die. In the park, mainly Estonian wild animals live, and I was able to finally see the lynx. It had hidden itself very well behind a fallen tree, and was waiting for the visitors to leave, so that it could start his day. I didn't get a good photo as the lynx was quite far from me, something that wasn't a problem while going to see the moose. The moose seemed really social and came as close as possible to me. Perhaps she was hoping for me to give her some food, as some visitors might do that, even though it can be really extremely dangerous for the animals. I also found out what kind of sound moose make, something that was a total surprise to me. <laughs> but my best experience was seeing the wolf really close up. He reminded me so much of Jack and looked just like a little harmless puppy who just wants to play. I managed to get some really nice pictures of the wolf through the fence and left with a huge emotion from looking the wolf to the eyes. Next day the weather was finally getting better and I drove to the biggest lake of Estonia, Vortjärv. There wasn't much snow left on that area, but the lake was frozen and I couldn't wait to fly my drone over the ice. The landscape looked really promising on the first flight but the light was just a bit too bright. I explored the coastal area while waiting for some better light. I had never been to that part of Estonia either and I saw some really cool sandstone outcrop on Tamme hiking path. Some really cool trees were growing on the edge of the sandstone cliff that really fascinated me. You could see the tree roots climbing the cliff and doing its best to keep the trees up and growing. I am always so inspired by the strength and adaptations different life forms have to survive, so, so I spent some time photographing those awesome trees. The light was now perfect to fly the drone over the ice. The battery for drone only lasts less than 30 minutes and I only have three batteries as they are quite expensive. I had already used one of the batteries earlier so I had less than an hour of flight time left. That one hour was pure magic though. The sun was setting and the coastal area and the batteries in the lake ice just looked perfect. 
It was definitely my favorite flying experience to this day and I wanted this moment to last forever. Everything looked so pure, so beautiful and I felt so thankful to witness it all. I took one of my favorite drone photos that evening and knew it was the right decision to leave my island to explore what else life has to offer me. The next day I was quite tired already from all the traveling and decided to take a short hike. I made my way to a small bog lake called Mustjärv and of course flew my drone up again. I had become really fascinated by the patterns you can see with the drone and tried to capture some beautiful forest this time. The bog lake also had some really captivating patterns on it as something had cracked the ice and formed some fascinating stars on the ice. Aside from flying the drone, this day was quite cloudy and I wasn't inspired to take many pictures. I strolled slowly on the wooden hiking trail and the grey weather allowed me to take in the slower pace of existing and spending some quality time with my, myself. As there was nothing to get my attention, I looked more inwards to get in touch with my feelings and thoughts and process everything that had happened lately. It is in those moments in nature that I really love where I just totally get lost in my thoughts and don't really have a need to get anywhere. Totally unproductive but totally necessary for my mental health. Finally the forest road led me to a really cool blueberry plantation, something I had never seen before. I had no idea the culture of blueberry bushes can get so large. That evening the sun came out again and I rushed my way back to the nearby Wurzjärv to capture the sunset. Again, it was pure magic. I was now ready to move away from the lake and decided to visit the most snowy part of Estonia. Icy roads and hilly landscape quickly made it clear why this area is called the Estonian Alps. There was so much more snow on the ground and it was really hard to drive down the hills as the smaller roads were covered in ice and my winter tires were not up for the job. Driving like little grandma, I somehow made it safely to hurry Maggie to the top of the hill next to legendary Tartu Marathon skiing tracks. There were quite a lot of people skiing there and the views from the lookout tower did not disappoint. Tartu Marathon is a 63 km cross-country skiing competition that is really popular among Estonians. It is one of the biggest skiing races in the world with nearly 12,000 participants in its peak years. But today the roads in the area definitely asked for better tires and I wanted to get down the hills safely as I was not feeling comfortable driving on them. I made it safely back to bigger roads and decided to go visit Sondaga Nature Reserve. Upon arrival I found a cute little forest house that people can rent out. A nice forest path took us to a beautiful old growth forest. I saw some interesting cuttings on the trees and learned that people used to collect pine resin from them in the Soviet times. 
the educational hiking path continued to lead us through the forest to a nearby river called Vaike Emayagi. It was a perfect place to fly the drone as the water was not frozen and looked really beautiful in contrast to the white snow. I was once again blown away by all the things my drone can see and captured one of my favorite pictures again. This time it was a little son dug a creek that looked exactly like a Chinese dragon. Me and Jack had a lot of fun walking around the, the nature reserve and I was really happy to have gotten to know this forest. That evening gave us another beautiful sunset and I felt really happy but really tired by the end of the day. There was a warning for northern lights this evening and as much as I wanted to find a good photographing location for the show, the long adventure days had gotten the best of me and I decided to not drive to any special location. I felt really bad photographer's guilt for doing so, but I needed to listen to my body and not exhaust myself totally. So I left my camera to time lapse in light polluted area and stayed indoors while the camera did the work. I also decided to rest for a few days as my energy had totally worn out. My next adventure started from Roga, where a very eye-catching lookout tower was waiting. It is called Pesabu, meaning bird's nest in Estonian, and it is obviously inspired by a bird's nest. In the tower there are two viewing platforms resembling a bird's nest and an egg-shaped entrance to the upper deck. Nearby are some old Estonian village huts that showcase how people used to live back in the day. Now came the most exciting part of the trip. I was planning to stay two nights in the forest all by myself. Up until now I had stayed at, the, at my family and friends places, but I wanted to also experience some nights alone. My first destination was the Luhaso Bog. I had visited this place many years ago in the summer. I knew there was a coolest little forest house on a little island in the middle of the bog. These houses are owned by Estonian Forest Management Center and are free to use for anyone. A hiking trail leads us through the forest and through the bog to reach the house. Forest houses are not heated, so me and Jack made two trips to bring the sleeping gear as well as some dry firewood I had in the car. It was another beautiful evening and perfect location for drone footage and some time lapses. I spent hours photographing and flying the drone and planned to also capture the night sky once it got dark. I left my camera to time lapse the twilight and heated the house as it was minus degrees outside. When the night fell, I walked around in the bog trying to capture the night sky, but the cold made my lens foggy and I couldn't really get what I was looking for. I still had a very cool experience staying in the bog at night and I loved how quiet everything was. The night in the forest hut was quite cold as I really loved sleeping under a lot of blankets and this was quite a change for me. The heat from the fireplace kept the room somewhat warm at first but it was really cold by the morning and I was struggling to get a good night's sleep. 
The next morning cloudy sky was back and I planned to visit a place I had never even heard of. I made a stop on Estonia's biggest hill, but the lookout tower was closed that day. I had lunch on a nearby restaurant to charge the batteries for the drone and drove down some roads I had never been to. Our destination was the Herma Murid or Herma Walls in English, huge sandstone outcrops in the Busa River ancient valley. The valley itself was gorgeous as the Pusa River was bending and twisting in really cool fashion. The upper Herma wall is the highest sandstone outcrop in Estonia, reaching 43 meters in height and 150 meters in length. And I was embarrassed to think that I had never even heard of these. The lower Herma wall was a bit smaller but very, very colorful. The surrounding forest had some really beautiful hiking paths and I definitely want to come back here in the summer when everything is nice and green. By the time I was done in Herma Walls, I was super tired and very tempted to just make some dinner and sleep in my car. But somehow I found the strength in me to drive to the next forest hut in Menigunnu Bog. Someone had been in the forest house the night before and the house was a little bit warm from that. A very nice surprise to a tired traveler. It also had two places to make the fire, so I used much more firewood this time and made the house really warm. I spent a much warmer night this time and managed to get much more sleep. The morning surprised me with sunshine, as the weather forecast had promised nothing but clouds. The surrounding bog was really gorgeous and the icy wooden bath promised a perfect morning walk. I couldn't wait to get my drone up that morning, but as it was quite crispy, the batteries lasted for a much shorter time and I had to rush through the bog. I had also realized how hard it was to photograph with the snow on the ground and as the sun was getting higher, I had very limited time to work. I flew past some beautiful frozen bog lakes and was once again totally blown away by the wintry patterns forming in the bog. The wooden bath itself was my favorite, mostly covered in snow, but clean on the spots where the sun had a better angle to melt the snow. By the time I made it back to the house, it was already 11 o'clock, as I had walked the hiking path for hours, getting lost in all the untouched nature around me. Menigunu was a really beautiful bog, and I couldn't believe that I had never even heard of it before. Later that day, I went to explore a very special place in Estonia, called Taivaskoda. It is sacred grow, Hees, as they call it in Estonia. These places were very holy to old Estonians. People used to go there to make offerings to the fairies and other supernatural forces that were believed to live there. There were many strict laws what was allowed to be done in sacred graves and what not. People also went to these places to get cured from illnesses as these places were believed to have healing capabilities. Taivaskola is one of the most important sacred graves and looks really beautiful as well. These places really have a different feel to them and I really love spending my time there. Walking there gave me a certain feeling of peace and it is almost as if it allows to feel connected to my ancestors thanks to whose love for this place and undeniable wisdom we have a chance to walk on this beautiful land, speak Estonian language and call this place our home. These kind of places have a special place in my heart, make me feel like I'm held by the people from the past, but also make me question what kind of impact I make on our land and on our people.
After two nights in the forest huts and discovering Taivaskoya, I was totally exhausted. It was almost time for me to go back to Tallinn, but I wanted to make one more stop to Soma National Park. Soma in translation means swampland and is a wetland area legendary for its fifth season. During springtime, the melting snow and rain floods the area, making it possible to explore the area with smaller boats. But now everything was still frozen and I was hoping to get some beautiful pictures of the rivers dancing in the meadows. I had never been to Soma and didn't really know the area, but driving through the national park itself was already very beautiful. Unfortunately, it snowed hard the night before my arrival and all the icy rivers got, got covered in snow. Making the landscape evenly white, I took a very beautiful hike through a hiking trail in one of the forests and was so in love with all the fresh snow, even if it ruined the drone shots I was hoping to get. The forest really looked magical and I took a lot of pictures of the snowy forest paths. This was exactly the type of experience I was missing while living on my snowless island in Hiyuma and I felt really happy again to have made this trip possible and allowed myself to experience all these beautiful landscapes in mainland Estonia. The whole trip was not easy at all, I felt quite tired at the time, both physically and mentally, and my thoughts were constantly lost to war in Ukraine. As much as I felt happiness for the experiences I had had, I also felt great sorrow and heartache for the innocent people losing their lives not too far from me. The whole time during this trip I had hoped that the aggression will end any time now, as the world just cannot let Russians do this to Ukrainian people. But the situation just kept getting worse and more people kept dying. I had planned to vlog this whole trip but totally lost my voice as the war started. My heart was quiet and unable to focus on talking and I kept taking pictures and videos so that I would do something to get my mind off the war. As I was driving through my beautiful country, other people were escaping theirs, just to save their lives. I felt guilty at times to have the privilege to experience all this and was really in an unhappy mood for days. But that's when I realized that this is what the Russians want. They want others to feel miserable as they are breaking their homes, breaking our Europe and our safe way of living. Putin wants us to suffer and me being miserable would have meant giving him a small win. So I realized I can't let this situation get me down and stop me from living. That is not to say that we should ignore the pain Ukrainians are feeling, but we should be strong for them. We should carry on our everyday lives while also helping to stop Putin and his killer army. We should laugh and enjoy life because darkness cannot win. We must be the light that will stop the evil. But I had one last place to visit, the Saula Sinialika, the sacred springs that were covered in snow the first time I visited. I went there again on one beautiful afternoon. The sky was clear from clouds and the water was clear from the snow. And the springs looked really nice this time around. It was a very beautiful moment. I saw our precious Estonian forest, the sacred grove and our free blue sky reflecting back from the clean water of the springs. Our free sky, our beautiful forest, our clean water, all that has an even bigger value in this new world. These things were not only holy to our ancestors, these are holy to ourselves as well, and we should protect them with all that we have. Thank you for staying around to take a trip with me on my beautiful homeland. I hope you have enjoyed our beautiful land and Estonia is waiting for you if you would love to see it for yourself with your own eyes.